modern Ukraine was entirely and completely created by Russia. On the 2nd of March, Kherson was entirely occupied by the Russian armed forces. The enemy's troops started their offensive from the Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea, which had been annexed back in 2014. The Kherson direction opened the way to Odessa. At the same time, a full-scale invasion started virtually along the entire border of Russia and Belarus. The main objective is the destruction of Ukrainian statehood. The President of Russian Federation ideologically justifies the armed aggression against Ukraine with pseudo-historical connections and outright myths. We were fighting with the Soviet past, but forgot about the imperial past, which our northern neighbor is now reviving as a means of justification and as a historical basis for this war waged to destroy Ukraine. Therefore, we must be perfectly aware that imperial symbols are hostile to Ukraine and the Ukrainian people as it is, and deny their existence. We are experiencing the continuation of the national liberation struggle for our independence, and this is a mandatory element to acquire our genuine statehood, independence and development of our contemporary Ukrainian political nation. The process we are passing through is not unique. The peoples of Europe also went through it when the empires collapsed. The Ottoman Empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the German Empire and the Russian Empire. It was a hundred years ago, a bit more than a hundred years ago. All the European nations went through similar processes. In the occupied territories, the occupants, first of all, are destroying the traces of Ukrainians' presence. For example, they demolish monuments to Ukrainian soldiers. And instead, markers of Ruskimir are installed, monuments to Lenin and other Russian figures, tricolors and Soviet flags, the naming of streets and settlements. Our enemy understands how crucial it is to take out the territory in terms of mid-set. That is why getting rid of colonial heritage is now highly essential for Ukraine. It's clear Ukraine requires the communization, as it is the front line as well. It has cultural and strategic importance. As we can see, the occupants and the Russian Federation have always considered cultural and humanitarian policy as a soft force policy that can be implemented in the territories potentially important for the Russian Federation, which used to be a part of it, the part of the Russian or Soviet Empire. They see it as an opportunity to explain to the indigenous population the dominance and, let's say, rootedness of the Russian Federation in these territories. In fact, during all these years, we watched the Russian Federation influence agents in our country, spreading myths, manipulations and trivial fakes about the dependence, presence and influence of some historic Russian elements on Ukraine. Exactly this kind of myth runs that Odessa was supposedly founded by the Russian Empress Catherine, whose monument has been standing in one of the central squares since 2007. It is called the Founders of Odessa and is a replica of the monument located in Odessa for two decades in the early 20th century. Only the statues of José de Ribas, Franz de Valan, Grigory Potemkin and Platon Zubov, which were kept in museum for a long time, have historical value. The installation of the modern replica is highly likely to have been funded by the Kremlin. This myth appeared 40 years after the death of Catherine the Great, and she would be rather surprised that she had actually founded something. The myth that Catherine the Great is the founder of Odessa has been instilled in the majority of Odysseys through mass media for over 30 years. It's a weapon, a very sharp and insidious weapon which affects human consciousness. It prepares human consciousness precisely to take it without striking a blow. So everything like this has to be shed. As the idea to erect the monument arose, pro-Ukrainian activists opposed it, choosing the need to dismantle and relocate the monument of the Russian Empress to a museum, in particular through suing out, and the corresponding court decision was rendered. However, the local authorities, headed by Odessa mayor, 
still stubbornly prevent the dismantling of the monument to Catherine. The local budget has allocated funds for its protection for years. Even during a full-scale war, the monument was protected at taxpayers' expense until the 22nd of June, spending 9,000 grivnes. No other monument in Odessa has been protected so desperately. To date, the city authorities have all the legal leverage to dismantle, for example, the monument to Catherine, because all the courts and the Supreme Court found its installation illegal. There are absolutely anti-Ukrainian markers. First of all, this is a monument to impress Catherine the Great, which some people call a monument to the founders of Odessa. This is a monument to the person who destroyed Ukrainian statehood and did it methodically. First Slobozhanchina, then Hetmanchina, and afterwards Zaporizhka Sich. This is a person who in 1783 enslaved the Ukrainian population. Can you imagine it? In fact, it is an enemy of the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian state. How can there be a monument to her in a city that is a part of the Ukrainian state? How could this monument be installed in 2007? There is that old story of how a Russian man hung his shoes in a Ukrainian's house. In the morning he said, if these shoes are mine, so is the place, so get out of here. These monuments are the shoes that they are hanging here. Besides the monument to Catherine, there are many other markers of Ruski Mir in Odessa, such as monument to Suvorov erected by the current mayor Gennady Druhanov in 2012, and the Alexander Column in Shevchenko Park, which glorifies Russian emperor and is decorated with double-headed eagle. Numerous street names in the city, and even the Suvorov district named after Russian general, remind us of colonial period as well. At the same time, the true history of Odessa related to Ukraine is not showcasted at all. Therefore, historians insist on enlightenment in the process of decolonization. Enlightenment is a must, and that's not only about the enlightenment of the state bodies, it's about the interaction of society, public bodies and local authorities. We have to promote the real history of Odessa. The real heroes of Odessa are Ukrainian patriots and outstanding scientists, doctors and artists. We have a distorted image of the history of Odessa, including the one offered by tour guides for city guests. Nothing will stop the idea whose time has come. The decolonization process, just like the decommunization that took place a few years ago, is one of the fronts in the fight against the enemy who came to kill Ukrainians and destroy Ukraine. And now the question rings clear. Either we destroy the Ruskimir or the Ruskimir destroys us.